The experiments we've just seen show that not only do the currents in a wire experience a force from a magnetic field, these currents apparently also cause magnetic fields. In other words, moving charges themselves cause a magnetic field around them. There are general techniques for calculating the magnetic field B at any location R, a vector, away from a current carrying wire, and these depend in general on the geometrical layout of the wire as well as the current and where around the wire you're looking. These techniques go by the names of the Bios of R law and Ampere's law. However, we will not develop these techniques in this class. We'll simply want to know three key results using those techniques. So you'll be expected to remember three special cases. The first is the magnetic field that takes place around a long straight wire carrying a current. Such a wire, even though it's straight, produces a magnetic field that is circular in direction. If the, the wire travels up and to the right in this picture, the lines of magnetic field would point in circular directions around the wire and in concentric circles from one another. In other words, if you were to place a compass somewhere down below this wire, the compass needle would point to the left. If you were to place this, a compass above this wire, the compass needle would point to the right. An important formula that you must know is that the magnetic field B depends on how far away from the wire you are. The magnetic field is mu naught times i over 2 pi times the radius away from the wire. r is the distance from the current carrying wire. The direction of this magnetic field is given by the right hand rule. To know this direction, one simply takes one's thumb and points it along the direction of the current. The fingers of your right hand then, when curled up, point in the circular direction around the wire in which the, current, the magnetic field would flow. If your thumb was pointing up and out of this page, then the magnetic field would swoop counterclockwise. In my diagram above, the directions of the red magnetic field lines is given exactly by the, magnetic, by the right hand rule. Because the magnetic field has a dependence of 1 over r, that means it's getting stronger as we get closer and closer to the wire. And the magnetic field lines should get closer and closer together. So we would have to draw more and more lines or, or loops of magnetic field around the wire. Each of these lines of magnetic field should form a complete circle. The second special case is when the current is not in a long straight wire but is in a loop of wire. A small loop of radius r produces a dipole field, much like a bar magnet. If we were to draw that magnetic field, then the loop of wire might be pointing in the horizontal plane, and the magnetic field would point straight up and out of that plane and circle around and come back in from underneath. This looks exactly like the case of a bar magnet. If we imagine the bar magnet in this picture, its north pole would be pointing up above the loop and its south pole will be pointing down below the loop. At the very center of the loop, the magnetic field has a formula that you should remember. Its value is mu naught times i over 2r. That's valid only at the very, very center of the loop. The direction of the magnetic field, the center of the loop, and in the rest of the sketch, you can remember if you remember the right-hand rule. In this case, your fingers should curl around the loop of wire in the same direction as the current is flowing. So in my picture, it looks like it's flowing counterclockwise when viewed from above. And in this case, the thumb of your right hand will point along the magnetic field at the center of the loop. It points up in the picture. The third case you should know is the magnetic field from a coil of wire, sometimes known as a solenoid. A solenoid looks like a slinky. It's characterized by having a certain radius of curvature and a length, but it's a, basically a coil. And we sometimes talk about the number of turns per unit length. So if you have a thousand coils around, uh, packed into a, a, a solenoid that's 10 centimeters long, then you have 100 turns per centimeter. 
Inside the coil of a solenoid, the, ma the magnetic field is actually fairly constant and just runs along the length of the solenoid. It doesn't depend where you are in the solenoid. It doesn't depend on how the radius of the solenoid. It only depends on the number, the number density of turns uh, n and the current in the solenoid I. And the magnetic field equation that you should know inside the solenoid is that B is equal to mu naught times number density times I. If you were to look all around the solenoid, however, you would see a magnetic field that looks an awful lot like a bar magnet. In other words, the magnetic field comes straight up through the solenoid inside and has that roughly constant form, but all around the solenoid, the field lines would bend back around, coming out from the top and heading back in toward the bottom. Much like for a magnet, which has a north pole and a south pole, and the magnetic field lines return from the north pole to the south pole. So we often speak, in fact, of the north pole or south pole of a solenoid. To understand which direction the, the magnetic fields come out and head, return back in to the solenoid, we use the right-hand rule. The right-hand rule for the solenoid is achieved by curling your fingers around the solenoid in the same direction as the current is flowing. If you do this, then the th your thumb will point up in the same direction as the magnetic field emerges from the solenoid. Notice that my thumb now points up in this picture toward the so-called north pole of the solenoid. So what you need to remember is the formula for the magnetic field inside the solenoid and the general picture that the, the field all around the solenoid looks like a bar magnet whose orientation is given by the right-hand rule. To review, there are three special cases of current carrying wires that you should remember. A long straight wire, a loop of wire, and a solenoidal coil of wire. For each of these magnetic fields, we can remember the direction of the magnetic field with respect to the wire using a right-hand rule. The direction of the magnetic field is sometimes given by the thumb and sometimes given by our fingers, but we have to just remember how to use the right-hand rule. You should always know which direction the magnetic field points and whether it's clockwise or clock counterclockwise or up or down. And you should also remember the functional form I gave you in these three special cases.